We are back at Harris in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and we come now to a junior welterweight fight that, if it is as advertised, should be most entertaining. Julio Flores, who is a very tough guy, Tony Marshall will not have to find him, and he has already given us a few thrills. 20-year-old Tony Marshall is a junior welterweight who believes his future includes a world title. But for now, he'll accept the steady improvement he's showing while posting wins in all but two bouts. Those were draws. He engaged in a torrid battle with Asif Dar, and he used his hand speed and combinations to carve out a win. This Albany, New York product has won eight of his victories by decision, like this one over Jose Avila. But as they work on his power, Tony expects to notch more KOs. But he'll have to be at his best to beat Julio Flores tonight to keep his string alive. And Julio Flores says he's not here just to be an opponent. He is here to win, and you know what? I believe him. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the junior welterweight division. This bout scheduled for eight rounds. The referee for this contest is James Condon. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with gold trim, and weighing in at 144 pounds. He's originally from Catania, Puerto Rico, now fighting out of New York City. His professional record, nine and one with four KOs. Introducing Julio Flores. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the light blue trunks with white letters, weighing 143 and one half pounds from Albany, New York. Undefeated as a professional with a record of 10-0 oh, and two draws, two KOs to his credit, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Marshall. Gentlemen, good evening. Protect yourself at all times. I want a good, clean fight. There'll be no punching on the break. Respect the bell. Good luck. God bless you both. Touch gloves. Good luck. So there's a look at Julio Flores, and as we said, Tony Marshall's not going to have to look for him. He's a straight-ahead guy. He's going to be looking knockout. And Tony Marshall, who himself would like to look for a few more knockouts, as Al pointed out in those highlights, nonetheless really plies his trade as a boxer. Oh, he's right out of the box with the left hand. And the thing that Marshall will see from Julio Flores is not just pressure, because he's seen pressure from some other boxers he's faced. He'll see a guy that gives him a lot of movement as he's coming in, as you see, and throws lots of combinations. And that will make it harder for Tony Marshall. Flores only lost a 10-round decision to Jake Rodriguez. There was a right hand by Flores. And he had Rodriguez down in that fight. Rodriguez, much more experienced fighter than Flores. You notice the uppercut of Marshall a moment ago. That's a punch that uh, they've been working on with him. They feel because he's pretty tall for a junior welterweight that a lot of the uh, fighters come in can be into the uppercut. You see him trying to throw that punch there. One thing that Flores does very well is jab his way in, as you can see. He just rush in. See, calling jab, even if it doesn't land, will help get him in. Never comes in without throwing some kind of jab. This is really almost the perfect matchup of styles, isn't it? Yeah, and that's, you know, there's the old cliche again, styles make fights, but that's one of the reasons that you and I both feel this should be a good fight. Nice counter left hand. Marshall coming downstairs with the left hook. Now, you have to know that there's been a lot of sound and fury with Flores in this first round, but he hasn't landed that many punches, I don't think. A lot of them have been blocked. Got there with the right hand. Tony Marshall, in the times that we've seen him, has been a pretty fast starter. Yes. He's built up early leads. Which may not be the case here because Flores is coming to him and probably is winning this first round. You know, as I say, not everything's getting there. It's, he's thrown so many. And Flores has landed a, a pretty good amount to the body. Early. 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 
the defense of Marshall has been pretty good overall. But as you said, normally Tony Marshall is off, gets off to a blazing start. Counter a lot more in this first round is Marshall. And Flores took the fight to him as we anticipated he might. So we'll see if, see if a tone has been set. End of round one. Tony Marshall landing that punch they want him to concentrate on the uppercut. Look at that nice short uppercut and then a spin move off the ropes. That in microcosm is his strategy in this bout. Very close first round. You can make a case for either fighter. You made a case I know for Flores. I thought Flores won that first round, but uh, by a very narrow margin. And, Take a look uh, at the numbers and you can see that it is in fact a narrow margin. Flores a little bit busier and got there a couple more times, but that's close round throwing 22 more punches. You're probably going to end up with a nice short right hand. Tony Marshall is countering him very, very well. And counter punching is, will be the watchword in our main event with Tony Tubbs and Bruce Selden because both men are good counter punchers as well. There's another good example. Flores is clearly the stronger of the two. But of course, he, he, he maybe nullifies that advantage a little bit, Barry, by coming in and, and adding to the power of Tony Marshall's punches. We always talk about Tony Marshall's uh, fashion sense. What's your verdict now on his, his latest uh, I, I outfit? I kind of like the uh, the last fight attire a li little bit better. And, and give us a, a rundown on what that might have been. And that was a, a more of a teal blue with ah. the Guyana flag featured on the bottom of one of the uh, one of the legs of the shorts. This is this is a, a little more of a maxi version with the, uh, the canted Tony. A smart outfit to be sure, though. <laughs> That fashion report was brought to you by, no, that's not true. Anyway, but Tony is a stylish guy. Good right hand by Flores. Now here is where Flores is getting nailed with counter punches, but still getting part of the job done. And we have to see now, as this fight goes on, even if Marshall wins this round, which he may well be doing, will that pressure have an impact on him? Yeah, we talked to Tony Marshall this morning about the fact that toward the end of fights he has a tendency to start to slap a little bit and I think it was interesting that his people were saying that they've been working on keeping a fight pace in their sparring yeah. sessions which is kind of an interesting uh, ploy I think and that will all come into play here because he's being forced to box at a pretty fast clip Nice, nice countering off the ropes, though, by Marshall. But look, there it is already. See, you're starting to see a little slapping by Marshall. We'll see if that continues. It's the first time I noticed it, and we're here at the end of round two. Now, he said he doesn't realize that he does it until he looks at the tapes afterward. So another very close round, and this is really developing as a tactical fight. We'll be back. College football coming your way on ESPN this Saturday. A triple dip. We start in the Big Ten with Iowa and Illinois at 12.30 Eastern time. Then it's a six-ranked Florida State team against Georgia Tech. They are ranked number 16. That's at 4 o'clock. Then to the Big Eight in Oklahoma and undefeated Colorado, the number seven-ranked team in the country. College football Saturday on ESPN. There you saw the, the, uh, the uppercut used by Tony Marshall. And uh, Julio Flores with a lot of pressure there. So we start the third round of what has been a very close fight. Marshall continuing to counter punch. Flores continuing to come forward. Take a look at the numbers from the second round. And, and the numbers, interestingly enough, the difference just about the same as it was in the first round. Marshall landing a few more punches, and that might have won him the round. Yeah, that round he came up with more punches landed, and I think he really countered very effectively against Flores. So on your card, a round apiece. There's the uppercut by Marshall. He can land that punch. Yeah, that is a good weapon for him. You can see Flores, who keeps his chin tucked, is really there for the uppercut. The question, though, as we go over eight rounds, will Marshall tire enough for Flores to really land some big bombs against him? Way out. Keep 
Suarez's his punches are a little wide also. I think they would probably like him to uh, straighten them out a little bit. There's a good example, a right hand that was not straight. Yeah, a three punch, counter punching attack from Marshall. A lot of wild swinging now by Julio Flores. Now there's the jab in the straight right by him, but he is not accurate with the right hand. <laughs> the hook by Flores. That's the first hook that got in that was really meaningful. And I think that got Marshall's attention a little bit. But then good counter punches by Tony Marshall. It, you know, it's all going to boil down to conditioning here, Barry. Marshall will be able to do this for at least another round or two probably, but will he be able to do it for eight rounds as he's pressured by Flores? And what about Flores? Will he be hit with so many counter punches that he'll have a problem? Marshall's been trying to fight on a monthly schedule. He wants to really escalate his action in the ring. Marshall from Guyana came to the United States in 1985. And he is going to have a birthday in a couple of days. He'll be 21 years old. Can you remember being 21 years no, old? I no, I've been 21 twice. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Nice uppercut and good combinations on the inside by Marshall. But he commits a sin there by going straight back and letting Flores hit him. Flores with good pressure. He just lets you take a step back, as you pointed out, and take a breath. End of the third round, and again, the story is the same as it has been. We'll be back. Marshall boxing off the rope shows you the uppercut and the combinations, and uh, he has counterpunched extremely well from that posture. And again, the fourth round starting out exactly as the other three had. Totals through the first three rounds. Marshall's starting to get a little bit more of an edge. Remember, Flores had the edge in the first round. Yeah, and the accuracy of Tony Marshall, pretty impressive at 47%. Tony Marshall is simply not a big puncher. Only uh, three knockouts in his 11 pro wins. But you can see he's an accurate puncher and uh, throws good combinations. Flores starting out this round as though he might be a half step slower. He's been hit with some pretty nice shots by uh, Tony Marshall. Not moving his feet quite as much in this round. No, as has been. And, and, and his balance is yeah, not as good. Leaning in. might be the time for Tony Marshall, who, who is capable of it, to, to fight him from the outside, box him a little bit more. <laughs> Marshall trying to go with that uppercut, just be short with it. He's got to be careful not to get uh, crazy with that uppercut and use that punch too much because you are vulnerable when you throw it from the wrong position. I'll tell you, Al, I really think that either Flores is taking this round off or he's starting to get a little tired. I think it's the latter because he's coming forward still throwing punches. They just don't have a lot of steam on them and they're uh, a little wider and not as effective as earlier as he uh, about. A little more holding, a little more grabbing. Mm -hmm. some power when he sets down. It's a nice right hand by Marshall. Tony Marshall, as you said, a 20-year-old, 20, 20 soon to be 21, who is fighting at a once-a-month pace, trying to work his way into, ultimately, into contention. They feel if he's busy and he fights a lot of different styles, as he's tonight in Julio Flores, he'll get there. Flores himself has designs on being a contender soon. Well, as I said, Flores came here to win the fight, and he's fighting that way. But perhaps to a losing cause. 
uh, using a right lead here. He's mostly jabbed his way in. That was his straightest and best punch of the bout. And uh, they've been few and far between for him, even though he's thrown lots of punches. Not been able to land like that. Tampa Bay Lightning beat the Chicago Blackhawks in their very first game in the NHL. Can you imagine that? And they won their first road game last night. Wow. And on your card, a two-point fight for Marshall now. And Marshall is starting to do more and doing as you suggested in the last round, boxing him from outside right now. And I think that would be a ploy that would really work for him because the way uh, the balance is a problem for Flores right now. Julio Flores, from his standpoint, has got to get in there, work effectively on the inside. It was wasting a lot of those punches, not really, uh, I think, pinpointing those punches, and that's why they're not accurate. He's just kind of winging with them, hoping they'll land. There's a good example. This young man from Puerto Rico who has been here in uh, living in uh, New York. Trying to make his way. One thing that uh, they thought they said he would do is switch back and forth from lefty to righty. He's not done that yet in this bout. Nice uppercut by Marshall as he's coming in. The counter punching of Tony Marshall is excellent in this match. There it is again. Well, they must have known. Now, they said they had not seen Flores fight, and yet you'd think by working on the uppercut that they did it deliberately for this, this boxer. And I've seen more uppercuts, haven't you, from Tony Marshall than we've seen before? Yeah, although remember they were talking this morning about how so many fighters have to bend down to get to the body of Tony Marshall, which really leaves the, the uppercut there, and, and Marshall's certainly taking advantage of it tonight. See, when you have the movement that Marshall, oh, excellent right uppercut. That one may have stunned Flores. That punch got Flores' attention. Flores is clearly a different fighter now. He is definitely slowed. He's got some respect now for the punching power of, uh, of Tony Marshall. And he is getting nailed with uppercuts. Wow, nice right, nice hand right. By Flores. Whoa, that one hurt Marshall. Boy, that was a clean shot. But does Flores have enough right now to take advantage of it? That's the problem. One punch for Flores. And I think it came when Marshall was trying to throw a left uppercut. So maybe Tony Marshall went to the well one too many times. Clean shot. I'm sure as good a punch as Flores at this juncture can throw. Marshall st stayed in there, though. He withstood that punch. Again, the uppercut by Marshall and the hook. And Marshall is not slapping with that left hook as much as he has in previous bouts. That's true. Back into the corner of Tony Marshall. All right. Tony, you gotta fight every second. Tony, you're gonna lose this fight. You're gonna lose this fight. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're gonna win it, baby. Let's push yourself. Okay. Give me the water. Search yourself. See? You know what you're doing? You're dropping back three, four steps, and you're out of. You you can't counter. You see something? You're too far out. You gotta use that one step. You're just looking at him in the past. Tony, swallow. Bam, bam. One step. Bam, bam. One step. Bam. You've got to get off, Tony. Early on in the round, Tony Marshall, there he gets the uppercut. It kind of half landed, but still had an impact. Flores with that right lead right, and guess what? It came when he was throwing a right uppercut from the outside, Tony Marshall. And when you do that, you're going to leave yourself open, and Flores really nailed him with a big right hand. Now Marshall, and there was a little bit of, I wouldn't call it panic in Tony Marshall's corner, but I was I was surprised, in fact, to hear them say, uh, you're losing this fight, you're blowing this fight. Now that may be just a motivational thing, but. Yeah, I, I really think that, uh, that uh, Tony Marshall has done a lot of good things in this bout. You know, he's in against the good guy, Julio Flores, putting a lot of pressure on him. Flores uh, coming in here with an excellent 9-1 record, comes in off a first round knockout over Rene Herrera. Um, and uh, she's tough. <laughs> she's tough. <laughs> I'm going to pretend you didn't say that, and I'm going to go right to these numbers. Because you see Marshall landing an excellent 51%, and uh, Flores throwing more punches, but not really as accurate. 
And Marshall still choosing to fight him at long range. And you know, one thing that Julio Flores is not doing that he did earlier is jabbing his way in, Barry. And it's, it's, that's part of the reason why he's been hit with those counter punches. Yeah, Flores really leaning in with his punches. Good left hand there. Another good left hand by Flores. That hook, he turned on that hook very well. But Flory's not throwing as much in combination as he was early in the fight. No, but I do think Tony Marshall is tiring a little bit right now. And this is about the time in these bouts when it seems to happen to him. They're talking about going to 10 rounders in the next couple of fights, and a lot will de depend on how well he does here. See, he, he can counter off the ropes pretty well, Marshall, but I think he's languishing a little bit too long in one spot. Marshall may be taking this round off. Nice hook to the body by Flores. Fewer com uh, counter punches by Tony Marshall. And this may be a round that he is handing over to Julio Flores. Not that Flores is taking good countering though by Marshall. sure if they berated Tony Marshall for three rounds last time, they will do even more so this time. Well, I thought he did much better in the last round where they did uh, give him a hard time. That time Marshall was there for the right hand and Flores missed the punch. End of six, eight round fight and we'll be back. The combination punching from Tony Marshall, something he didn't do, I don't think enough of in that last round, but that was a good example of how he has done it and, uh, and can do it. So this is the seventh round and Flores started early. Marshall took the middle rounds. And Flores might have stolen the last round. The numbers well, in the sixth round. Close round. I ended up giving it to Flores, and uh, I guess I, you know, perceived him doing a little better than the 30 out of 97 because I'm not counting each punch, his punch profile, but I felt that he had done a little better. You know, the fact is, Tony Marshall's had two draws, and you can really see why a fighter like Marshall would get draws. Very good point, really, because what happens is he seems to do a lot in some rounds and then not quite enough in others, and so it, it ends up being a, a mixed bag. See, now, he's capable of doing this, though. This is not a bad style for him to, to box and go on the outside against uh, Flores and hit him coming in. He might have been served better to do this more than lay on the ropes. Good uppercut. And there's the left hand by Flores and Marshall Connors. Watch your way out. Your hands are free. Keep punching. Nice right hand by Marshall. Most of the punches from both men now coming singularly, though. Let go. Break! Break! They trade hooks, and uh, usually when they trade hooks, Flores gets there with a little bit more power. This is a very pivotal and close round. There it is, and there have been a few rounds in this fight that could ostensibly go either way. This is oftentimes we talk about the judging the fight. This is a very tough fight to judge. Really, as Flores has been more active in almost every round, throwing more body punches, but Marshall has been, I think, ac more accurate in general with his punches, though he's thrown field. And he's taken the fight to Marshall. Yeah, that's something judges are looking at, too. Marshall's been primarily the counter puncher, so for Tony Marshall to win this fight, judges are going to have to really pay attention. 
Now, for Flores, his aggressiveness should count for something, but only, of course, if he lands good punches. He landed a pretty good one just a moment ago, too, and that might have slowed Flores just a little bit. One round to go, and we'll be back right after this. So we start the final round. Flores in the blue trunks, Marshall in the light blue trunks. Tony Marshall in the trunks that say Tony on it. <laughs> there are the total punch numbers uh, with Tony Marshall on the punch profile ahead by a fairly good margin. Oh, now, it's very low connect percent. Yes, but he's thrown 598 punches. So, of course, the judges sitting there may feel at some point that he has landed more than punch profile. Says so good right hand by Flores. On There's your card, Marshall, by three rounds. Yeah, because he has done a lot of excellent counter punching, although now Flores is doing an extremely good job here in this round. Um, but in a lot of those rounds, I just think Marshall, while he's had his back to the ropes and Flores has thrown more punches, he has been more accurate. And when you get right down to it, in my opinion anyway, it's who is landing punches. All the rest becomes kind of superfluous. Again, it is one of those fights that you can see some wildly diverse oh, yeah. scoring. Well, because Flores, to his credit, has been very aggressive, thrown a lot of punches. But there's a, a typical example. He took the uppercut. You know, this whole exchange doesn't mean that much landed, but what has been landed, in my opinion, has been landed by Marshall. And, of course, still coming up, our main event, heavyweights Tony Tubbs and Bruce Selden. Well, there was a nice left hook by Julio Flores and a right hand. And it's not that he isn't getting there with some punches, but uh, a lot blocked on the arms of Marshall. Although this has been a pretty good round for Flores. How many times, though, have we seen counter punchers not yeah. get the credit that perhaps they're due? Frequently. And I think it's incumbent upon the people judging to really be, ooh, good left hook by Marshall, to really, really be careful of scoring for people that land the punches. So we'll see what happens here. Of course, that's open for interpretation, too. I or punch profile, as somebody else may say, we thought certain punches landed. Somebody else may feel they didn't. But as we head down the, the, the home stretch of this one, you just know it's going to be a, a very close decision, or could be. I think it, I, I would sense that it would be. And Julio Flores has done himself some good in this eighth round. There's no question about that. And the seventh. So he had the early rounds. You can make an argument for the seventh round, and certainly for this round. It's only an eight-round fight. Leave too many more rounds. Both got there with a the right hand. And then the uppercut by Marshall. And Marshall, for the first time, hurts him right at the bell. So it is in the hands of the judges. And it's going to be another close fight, I, I feel, for Tony Marshall. And I don't think that uh, for Julio Flores, he got done some of the things he wanted to get done. There you look at, uh, at now there's Flores, who got done a lot of what he wanted to get done, but I think in my opinion anyway, and I ended up scoring the fight a two-point win for Tony Marshall, I believe that Flores' accuracy was a problem for him. Uh, but for that man, Tony Marshall, I don't think they were pleased with the fact that he stayed on the ropes as much as he did, but he did counterpunch very well. Yes, so he did. we'll see what the judges it's feel about it. It's be interesting, I think. So we await the outcome of this. Next week, we will be back here in Atlantic City. We'll be at the Taj Mahal where Ricky Myers fights Razai Bramble, who's had more identities, I think, than the Green Hornet, hasn't he? And, and more, more reincarnations in boxing. That should be a great matchup, and they're both great guys, so we'll have fun visiting with them. Should be an entertaining fight, too, just as this one was. Let's find out how this one went with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Harris Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Lynn Carter and John Potteray both score the bout 78 to 74. Tommy Kazmarek has it 78, 75 for the winner by unanimous decision. Julio Flores. So that's a big margin. That's a big margin. They all agreed. So. 
that's an impressive win for Flores, who runs his record to 10 and 1. And for Tony Marshall, he suffers his first loss as a professional. He is now 10, 1, and 2. And I am quite certain that we will see both as we move on down the road. Excellent performance by both men. It really was. Had the makings of being a good fight. In fact, it was. And Flores did a little bit more in the eyes of the judges. He wins it. And we'll be back with the ringside report after this. <laughs>